the trickiest part honestly is part differentiate between a polar bond and a polar molecule because non-polar molecules can still have polar bonds like CHCl4 so time for a little bit of a water break mm. so this question is asking us okay how do you balance Um, this equation mg plus hcl okay it turns into mgcl2 plus h2 so for this one um, I have to put my guard up <laughs> because although you're tempted to just solve it uh, just by glancing and filling everything out um, for this question specifically it's actually looking for a redox equation why? Because when you assign your electron number to each of these um, molecules and elements, you will see that magnesium, and for electron numbers, you kind of have to memorize how to do it. For elements, okay, it's always zero. So same with the hydrogen over here, okay? And then, when you come to molecules, right, halogens are typically minus one, and there's only one of them, okay? And um, that means that hydrogen has to accommodate for that. And hydrogen is typically plus one when bonded to anything. Um, means that they're typically just as plus one. So same thing here, the halogen is minus one, and that means there's two minuses. So magnesium has to make up for it by being plus two. Okay? So magnesium, okay, in a sense, if you wrote down the half equation, it went from the magnesium solid turns into because remember that plus means it lost electrons so it'd be mg2 plus plus two electrons because that's how much it lost and the next thing that changed if you look closely right the chlorine stayed the same the hydrogen went from plus one to zero and magnesium went from zero to plus two so we don't write the chlorine down the next one we actually write is the hydrogen okay hydrogen plus turned into oops, I wrote that one wrong it would actually be hydrogen plus plus an electron turns into hydrogen gas okay and because there's two of them here right H2 you want to make sure that you have the same amount over here so because you needed two hydrogens to turn into hydrogen gas right you need two electrons because you need an electron per hydrogen okay and with that actually conveniently that actually already balances out the amount of electrons you need okay so now we have our balanced redox half reactions okay because even a sense what you've been able to do here is make sure that the amount of electrons going in are the same as the amount of electrons going out Hence, there's not really quote unquote an electron change. So now what we have is 2H plus plus Mg, it turns to Mg2 plus plus H2. So now we apply that to our equation here, okay? So we have magnesium, okay, plus, we need two H's and it's attached to the chloride. So it'd be 2HCl, okay? And then that would turn into, okay, MgCl2, as the question said, plus H2 gas. And the reason why we could just, um, you know, ignore the, I guess I could just be out, let me just put aqueous. But yeah, so this is what you'd get as a balanced equation here. What we did there was that. We first balance out the half reactions, which is the electrons, which is exactly what they did here. And then they have the oxidized equation. And then you see here we have Mg2H, Mg2 plus plus H2, which then you'd put it back into the original equation. So now you know you have 2HCl, which conveniently has the MgCl2 and 
everything, every constituent should balance. We have one magnesium on both sides, two hydrogens on both sides, and two chlorines on both sides. So this is a balanced out equation. You could just balance it out by just looking at it and saying, oh, we need two hydrogens and two chlorines. But when you get to more complex redox reactions, you have to balance by the electron change there. Hence why we use the half reactions there. Because there are some questions that where you have to start adding things like the hydrogens, like the protons, and water on either side. And you cannot solve that just by a glance. Okay? So this is correct. And now we move on to question 12.